How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays, 6 p.m. with me. Happy WrestleMania Day, night two. It's happening in a little bit. Night one was last night. Really good show. You know, I'm going to talk about this a little bit, okay? I I'm going to I'm gonna go into the overall presentation and the match. I, you know, I think, I think today we could spend some time on WrestleMania. Uh, I thought overall it was the best presented wrestling show as far as visuals go that WWE has ever done. Uh, probably in all of professional wrestling. This was the best, the highest quality as far as, you know, big time feel. The matches were great. But I saw a lot of people were taken back on, on how grand the scale of this was. We're going to talk about that, obviously. There's, there's a lot to break down here. Uh, overall, great main event. Great semi-main with Charlotte and Rhea. I, I, I enjoyed essentially every single match. This was one of the first WrestleManias that I watched where I didn't feel like there was like a, a nothing match. Everything felt good. Everything was fun. Everything had a purpose. We're going to talk about that. Also give you a preview to night two, which is going to happen here tonight. I know a lot of people at WrestleMania this year. This thing is packed also, by the way. Very busy. It took people like an hour and a half to get out of that parking lot. NXT results if we have time. Also joining me today, my tag team partner on Matt Men. Once again, joining me, Rich Stambolian of the Matt Men podcast and Behind the Counter podcast, where he talks about comic books. I'm sure he'll tell us a little bit about that. We have all that on a whole lot more here today. But I want to remind you guys, if you're enjoying the show, hit the follow button. Subscribe to us everywhere we are. And we'll be right back here on Sports Byline after this. Wrestling Observer Live WrestleMania edition. I'm joined by Rich Stambolian of the Met Men Podcast. What's going on, Rich? Hey, Andrew. Thanks for having me on again. Two weeks in a row this time. I know. I know. And that's it. You'll never be on again. That was it. You're going to disappear after this. Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> WrestleMania was a lot of fun last night. Very long. I mean, I guess it was. You know why it was long? I started streaming it at six because the kids were so into watching it. Right? I have a whole new yeah. perspective of, of professional wrestling. I'm going to tell you this. My my entire perspective has changed over the last couple of years. Um, I know what I like. I know what you guys like that's listening to this. I know what my kids like, so I'm able to kind of see this. And I'm also, I talk to people there, so I kind of know what they want. Uh, very different perspectives for everybody involved. All parties. For sure. I think your perspective shifted when we went and did that SummerSlam weekend together. Yeah, And man. we saw kind of like how the sausage was made, and it clicked for both of us, basically thinking like, oh, we get it now. Yeah. Like, now this is very different. And last night's show, I think, case in point, very amazing, big presentation. Everything yeah. was big. Now, now, both of us, right? And, and I'm going to go into this, yeah. but I want I want people to understand my perspective of my criticism and the things that I liked about this show. Okay, I'm going to be very honest with everybody. What Rich is talking about is two years ago we went to SummerSlam in Vegas, and it really was an eye opening experience for both of us. It was a very different presentation from previous wrestling shows that I've been to. I've been to WrestleManias, man. I've been to, I, I mean, I've been to MetLife. I've been to uh, Mania at the Garden. I've gone to indie shows. I've gone to AEW. I still stand by the fact that that double, that, that all out was my favorite wrestling show I've ever been to. That still stands. But agreed. I, being at SummerSlam and seeing the, what they were doing and how this show was presented, you could tell that the pandemic slowed them down in this evolution of what wrestling is, what WWE is, and the whole Nick Khan effect. We finally saw, Vin I mean, this is Vince's grand end vision of what professional wrestling should be, was last night. The pop and circumstance, larger than life, it felt like... I, I was trying to come up with a description for this. It really felt like I was watching like the MTV Music Awards celebrities here athletes there musicians the the sponsorship the corporate sponsorship everywhere the ring was sponsored you had a deranged cinnamon toast crunch what was he doing the dougie what i mean he was dancing on the side i, I the toothpaste guy also the toothpaste the toothpaste guy 
What toothpaste guy? Yeah, there was a there was a guy dressed like toothpaste in like a tube during Ma- the uh, the Logan no, no, no. Paul thing. No, 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 no. He was not toothpaste, my friend. He was a he was, prime was, he was energy drink. It was a prime oh, energy okay. drink. But you know what? I had it. I had I... it with the sound off. Might as well have been toothpaste. <laughs> I would have preferred it to be KSI in a toothpaste costume sponsored by Crest. I mean, you know what? Is that is that insane for you to think? No. It's very no, realistic. So, I this is this is what WWE is now. It is transcended, it has evolved into something that is very foreign to me as a kid that grew up in the 80s and 90s watching professional wrestling. And experiencing some of that very aggressive Madison Square Garden crowd in the early 90s. We have gone into, I mean, this, it was an NBC production, man. I, I And I'm not, I'm going to tell you, it looked fantastic. I, I, You know, what did you think of the overall visuals of this before we run down everything? I think, I thought it was stunning. But again, it's also like, it's subjective to how you watch it. You know, we always watch it with like, these big events we'll watch with a group of people. I thought it was stunning. It was very polished, you know, and I want to ask you like a quick, I want to ask you like a quick question too. Like I, sometimes I look at this stuff and I feel like, you know what? WWE has not changed. It's just us who are changing. Think about it this way. You mentioned when you were a kid, so you'd watch, uh, an undead cowboy murder people into a casket. Yeah. A man with a snake, uh, the ultimate warrior, right? Papa Shango, the voodoo priest, right? It would cut to a commercial of Macho Man yelling at you to eat salty meat snacks and then come back and you'd see like Hulk Hogan showing up and million dollar man stuffing dollars in people's mouths. You know, what's the difference between that and the nutty uh, golden Graham going bananas or Snoop coming out with the low rider and like them doing all that kind of stuff. It's more polished now. And I think way more it's yeah. just visually more stunning, you know? Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's, you know, it's 1080p. It's very high quality cameras. It's very, it's perfect lighting. They, they've, they've perfected the live event more than anything else. It's not so much as far as the hokiness. You know, yeah, you got, you got a, a cinnamon toast crunch dancing on the side of the match, but you know, you didn't have it happening during intricate. Like in, that was an intricate story for Ray. Yes. Right, it, it was a very emotionally driven story, and I'm watching Cinnamon Toast Crunch, deranged serial graphics, a- and a serial dancing on the side for this very serious thing. It took me out of it. I also have an insur. I mean, how many times were they going to tell us to do our taxes? Listen, did you remember to do your taxes with TurboTax? I did not. Uh, I did that, not. <laughs> that took me out of it. Because you're, uh, for example, like I was telling you, I got really emotional during that main event. And then the highlight is like the TurboTax highlight of the night. And yeah. I'm like, ah, this, this really Listen, took but me you know out what? of it. We had the Lugs boot, boot of the week. You know, we had all of that. In, in a weird way, that was in more a, acceptable. In a weird way, it was more <laughs> acceptable. I know. So, I, I mean, overall, I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm being very nitpicky, but I'm not complaining. I thought it looked fantastic. Um, it, it, it really is something else you you see. Listen, man, they're also selling this company, right? Yeah. And if there was ever an example to, to show to investors as to look at what you're getting, you're going to show this. You're not going to want to oh, show a, a smoky building. They don't care about the prestige of Madison Square Garden. They don't care about any of it. They, they, they want to see Logan Paul. They want to see celebrities. They want to see Snoop Dogg and the Lowrider. This is all, I mean, this was the best sales pitch they could have done. Uh, it, oh, it was, agreed, 100%. You know, it also kudos to them on kind of perfecting how this works because uh, they are they are so far ahead of everybody else in this entire industry and in, in, in sport in media. Who else presents a product like this on this grand scale? Nobody. Yeah, it's wild what they did with last night and tonight's show. You know, like just if you really think about it, it's bonkers how big it's become. And you work in the staging, the fireworks, the matches, the costuming, you were saying like they've created like this, this machine, but I think they've created like a almost fully immersive live show experience. So you're kind of getting the bang for your buck. 
yeah. at these shows. Well, I can tell you, uh, we know a lot of people, both of us, uh, and I'm sure many of you listening, we a ton of people went. Uh, and the experience overall from everybody that I spoke to was, wow, this was awesome. It was awesome to be there. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Brian Albert, Brian was there. He said it was unbelievably great. Dave watched it, and Dave said this was probably the best WrestleMania they've done as far as matches go. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. I want to break down the matches here. But, uh, you know, we, we're, we've seen – this is, this is WWE now. And the, the I, that that previous whatever you wanted previously with wrestling is dead. And here's the great thing: there's an alt, there's an alternative to this. If you don't like this, there's many alternatives to this. We saw a great weekend of wrestling between Ring of Honor and every other promotion that's there in LA putting on shows. But the gap is so big now. It's 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 huge. I'm not, and I'm not talking about success or viewership. I'm talking about overall presentation of what this is versus what everybody else is doing. I, I you know, will anybody catch up? I don't know. Well, do should they? Is this something to catch up to? Is it because they've they've outdone wrestling at this point? I don't look at this as pro wrestling at this point. Yeah, they're they're on a spaceship where everybody else is on like a like a locomotive. Yeah, and, and Vince's uh, Vince's weirdo mustache made the debut, which uh, I I couldn't get over. The dye job, it, it's it's my hair. It's the same wig shop that I go to. <laughs> they just glued it right <laughs> Only on. The Only the best. Only the best. Only the best. Only the best. I'm gonna <laughs> do. I'm gonna do the pencil thin mustache. Maybe I should do the whole thing. Get a terrible just for love and a pencil thin mustache, like a Gomez. Hey, I want to see you in a beautiful John Waters mustache. When we come back, we're going to break down the show and a whole lot more here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live with me, Andrew Zarian. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition here. WrestleMania edition. Hey, before we go into night one of WrestleMania, let's talk about the convention happening in Las Vegas during Double or Nothing weekend. The F4W Las Vegas Convention 2023 Memorial Day weekend. Head on over to F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. There's going to be meet and greet opportunities, Q&A, sweet party, dinner, and a whole lot more. I was there last year. It was a lot of fun. And I know you guys absolutely had a blast. F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. Let's start this off, Rich. Uh, night one began with Austin Theory defeating John Cena to retain the United States Championship. Went um, 11 minutes and 20 seconds, 19 seconds. Uh, you know, very by the books, John Cena match. Austin Theory looks great, though. Holy moly, he's jacked. You can tell why they're starting to potentialize him for the future. You know, like he is very smooth in the ring. I don't know if you've caught that. Like, there's a lot of little things that he did going against Cena that blew me away as like, you know what? This guy, this guy might be the guy. They they see something in him and he beat Cena. Mm -hmm. Everybody was talking about Cena's bald spot on social media. That was a big takeaway here. Uh, yeah. Listen, man, you know, the dude's still going. He did his John Cena match. He, he put over this kid in the opener. I'm sure he had a blast. My kids loved it. They had a, they had a great time oh, yeah. watching this. And, you know, they're, they're planning the future with Austin Theory. It just depends on, you know, the next year. I think the big story for the next, I guess, 18 months is going to be Austin Theory, um, or what they do with him. Obviously, the Logan Paul presentation is great. Dominic Mysterio has kind of transcended into a great heel for them. Uh, there's a lot of these. Uh, what happens with the Street Profits? You know, that's another part of this. Do you break them up? The, the next year, you're going to see a lot of these changes here. Talking about the Street Profits, we got a fatal four-way match right after this. Street Profits defeated Braun Strowman and Ricochet, Alpha Academy, and the Viking Raiders. Um, you know, this was a very bizarre match. You know, just watching it with people that don't watch wrestling too often, you have to explain what everybody was doing. Uh, Alpha yeah. Academy was the, was the star here. Absolutely. Uh, very, very cool. The the Viking Raiders look great, too. And you know what? Think about it. These guys were in Ring of Honor, right? War Machine. Yeah. They were in Ring of Honor, and, uh, you know, they had a great run in NXT also. Great run in NXT, and they came up to, to the main roster. What did they call them when they first debuted? It was a terrible name. 
it wasn't the Viking Raiders. It was the was it the Viking Experience? The Viking Experience. It was a it was a letdown of a name, you know. Um, I still don't. I, I'm not a fan of the Viking Raiders. You know, call them the Raiders or the Vikings. Yeah, either or works. Uh, Braun yeah. Strowman looks gigantic. You know, big dude. Uh, big dude. This was a fun match when eight minutes, 29 seconds. She profits win. But again, what do you do with them? Are they a tag team? Do you, do you split them? I say split them. I say split them. Montez, man. Montez, big, big push 2023. What a charming guy, right? Like you look at him oh, yeah. and you say like, oh, man, this guy's such a great main, you know, WWE act. He could do all yeah. of it. The Tonight Show, you know. He could do all that stuff. Very cool. We got Logan Paul and Seth Rollins. 60 minutes. Logan Paul looks like a million bucks, man. He came down, did the zip line like Shawn Michaels. Seth Rollins, wacky outfit. He was wearing the double J uh, chest harness. Is that what it is? Yes. Uh, what did you think of this match? I thought it was great. I thought it was a lot of fun. Another showcase for Logan Paul, WWE is doing such a great job of putting this guy with seasoned vets that not only help him through a match, but make them both look good, you know, and every match he's been in, he's looked good and his opponent has looked good. And I think it's no difference with the Seth match, you know, perfect opponent for Logan Paul. I want to see who's next. Like, who do they put him up with next? Well, here's the thing, right? Like, uh, and, and think about this and the chat could help too. And the listeners could help. Has there ever been anybody that came into wrestling that was not a wrestler, obviously an athlete, he's, he's very athletic, mm -hmm. that just got it this quick? Does Bad Bunny count? Because no, we Bunny, heard legitimately I, that he picked it up super quick. Yes, but not like this. This, this guy is a main event act. Yeah. I mean, like Bad Bunny yeah. can't. Bad Bunny would just sell and sell and sell if he's in the ring with everybody. He could do a couple spots, but this guy is... I, I mean, you watch his wrestling, and it's really solid. And for how many matches Johnny has Knoxville. he had? Johnny Knoxville. This guy, <laughs> uh, you know, I. it's so impressive to see him because he's so yeah. confident. His presentation is overall great. Um, you know, Seth obviously is, is great, and he's going to make this into a fantastic match. But do you see Logan Paul, them putting the title on him? I see it. I see them putting a title on him because I think the title would be too much and the company probably wouldn't want those optics. Or maybe they do. You never maybe, know. Like uh, we were saying, you know we've what? been saying that it's it's completely different, you know? It's completely different. That whole, well, you can't put it on a guy that's undeserving. That's out the window. They don't care. It's marketing. Logan Paul walking around on his podcast with the WWE World Championship and talking about it constantly is everything that they ever wanted. Now, now I got a question for you. If they put the title on Logan Paul within the next two years, this is a big if, right? Would you feel they righted the wrong of putting a world title on um, David Arquette? You know what? It's the same exact thing, right? Isn't it? On paper, it's the same thing. You're putting your t title on somebody that's, and I'm using quote, undeserving. He doesn't do this night, mm -hmm. night, every night. But what kind of marketing are you getting it? We're still talking about David Arquette with the WCW title. In professional pre wrestling. Pre-internet. Pre-real like pre, real internet. Also. Pre, yeah, it's pre-this version of what, what we call the internet. Logan Paul having it, I, I think people would be a little bit more understanding because how good he is. But... Listen, do I want that as a wrestling fan? No, probably not. But as a marketer, I would say there's no better opportunity to get eyeballs than mm -hmm. putting your title on somebody that is a media star. Kevin Hart right. should have that title. Kevin Hart was did the opener. But th you know what? There was so much happening, like mixed message. Kevin Hart's doing that opening video. Snoop Dogg is hosting, but not really. So is The yeah. Miz. Like, it was a little all over. But very impressed. Logan Paul put on a great match with Seth. Seth defeated him. 60 minutes, 16 seconds. Uh, very cool. There was, a, there was a big spot with KSI on the outside. Dr he was dressed as the prime drink that Logan Paul has. Uh, he was taking a selfie with Seth on the table. Seth grabbed him, swapped places. Logan Paul did whatever he... What was it? Was it a flip? Was it a... a, a I think it was a big frog splash. Big, big splash. 
onto him, crashed and burned, and then that that kind of uh, started the process of him losing. So, very cool. Uh, very much enjoyed it, man. It was a it yeah. was a fun yeah. match. My kids, my kids were watching up until now. I think they they the Dominic stuff they they were done. They were like passed out at that point. Yeah, yeah. So right after this, we went into. By the way, between all of these matches, tons of video packages, tons yes. of advertising. Tons of more video packages and tons of more promotion. It was, I I was actually like at, at, in the beginning. I'm like, yeah, people are complaining about this. I don't know why. And then like by the end of the show, I was like, holy moly, can we get through this? Can we just start almost, this main event? I think a lot of people are suffering from TurboTax PTSD right now. <laughs> you know, like I get it, I get it. I got to do my taxes. Oh, you know, I got one. I got I got oh, I, thirteen days. Right, like I'm an adult. I don't need to be reminded to do my taxes in two weeks. You know, like you I don't got to do your taxes in two weeks. A wrestling show. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. It gave me anxiety. It gave half of America yeah. anxiety. Oh, absolutely! Like, oh my god, I do have to do my taxes. Should I do them myself? Always a mistake. And I'm my mom. Myself, you know, don't tell me to do my taxes. <laughs> WWE. <laughs> so in between um, a turbo tax and a this break and a that break, uh, we got the six woman tag match, Trish Stratus. And the tag team champions, Becky Lynch and Lita, defeated Bailey, Dakota Kai, and EO Sky. EO looked like a million bucks. Okay. I'm yes. a huge fan of EO Sky. Same here. Huge fan. She threatened my wife at the garden. Hmm. Jessica, Jessica was scared, had to begged her for forgiveness for not shaking her hand. It was a whole thing. Terrifying woman. So is Dakota. So is Bailey. But uh, I thought this was a fun match. You know, you could kind of see Lita. Lita was winded by the end. Yeah, this was a lot, a lot of moving parts. Trish looked good. Becky obviously looked fantastic. Bailey, Dakota, EO, all great. Lita, Lita was looking great too. But at the end, like she just like I, I think it just so much, so much is happening. Yeah. So uh, this was fun. Now the question is, what do you do? How do you take the title off of Becky and Lita? Do you swap it? Do you, uh, what does Trish do? A lot of people are speculating that Trish will turn or Lita will turn or something like that. Were you happy with this match? I was fine with it. Like, you know, I have usually low expectations going into major events and I maybe had the lowest expectations out of this match. Not because it was a gimmick match, but it was almost like the Legends match. This was like the, this yeah. took place. It, this was in that Legends match spot, you know, yeah. right before your celebrity stunt match. And right, right after your celebrity stunt match, and right before like your serious storyline. Do you know? You know what's crazy and 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 scary? And, and I'm not knocking the girls at all with this. This was the equivalent of Roddy Piper and Jimmy Snuka tag tag teaming with whoever in a legends match against you know three other yes. people. That's I, I mean, yeah. and, but it's it's amazing because. Lita and Lita and Trish are probably, you know, we uh, legendary, right? And you don't look at them as like these old tiny people. You look at them and you're like, wow, they look right. fantastic. They they still go it. It was actually interesting to see how uh we take care of ourselves a little bit better now than the older Absolutely. guys did. <laughs> you know? That plays a big part in this. But Trish looked great, Becky was great, Lita was fun. And, uh, you know, I very much enjoyed it. It was a nice nostalgia act. Uh, but now you got to talk about taking the title off of Becky and Lita and maybe doing a singles thing yeah. with them and entering into this. We're going to sure. go to a break in a few seconds here. But this match, I was very invested in emotionally. Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. Very cool entrances. Big story here. They've taken months to talk about this. We're going to go to a quick break here and come back and talk about the remainder of the show. Wrestling Observer Live Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live WrestleMania edition of the show. I'm joined by Rich Stambolian of the Matt Men Podcast. Two weeks in a row here, Rich. Two weeks in a row. Thank you for having me. Is this the last time you're letting me on? This is the last time I'm ever doing the show. It's over <laughs> after this. It's all over. Oh, okay. Pull the plug. Yeah. Yeah, it's all over. Uh, let's talk about this. Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, 14 minutes, 30 seconds. What did you think of the entrances? Loved it. Yeah. I loved both their entrances. Dominic having like the little prison vignette and then him being brought in with the Lucha mask. Yeah. Tremendous. Yo, maybe the best heat of the night, right? 
I, I'm going to tell you, man, you know, they, from, from the time he came into the company to now, he has really, uh, you got to give him so much credit. He has really taken on this persona. He's so much more comfortable doing this than being a baby face. Uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the Eddie Guerrero references, the, just all of it. So good. Uh, he came out with the mask. I wanted him to wrestle in the mask. Same here. Like what a what a great insult happen. to his dad, you know. He, he but he came out. He, police escort Ray comes out in a low rider with Snoop Dogg. Uh, they were playing Snoop song, and then it went into Eddie's song, then Ray's song. Crowd was going nuts for this. They loved yeah. every bit of it. Ray looked great. I this match, they, I loved everything about this match except there's the, a the serial ad around the ring. And the dancing, well, yeah. demented, mutated uh, cereal that was on the outside. Took you out of it. Took me out of it a little bit, man. I didn't want to see deranged cinnamon toast crunches on the, on the graphic wall. But whatever. A little distracting, especially, especially during, the, uh, during the big blow-off match between father and son. That's, been that's all I could see. For months and months. <laughs> and all you could see was a dancing cereal cube. Yeah, I could see how you wouldn't like that. <laughs> Uh, what did you think of the match? I thought the match was awesome. And you also hate cereal. So I hate let's get cereal. That out there. I hate breakfast cereal. Uh, I thought the match was great. I think both of them did a great job. Myster- Come on, man. There's a reason why Myster- Rey Mysterio is Rey Mysterio, right? Yeah. Dominic, too. Dominic looking good in the ring. I think, you know, they're building that future star. And the fu- if, you, if you take a step back and you look at, like, Dominic Mysterio, Austin Theory, and Logan Paul, that's a pretty bright future for WWE, right? Dominic Mysterio, what, Dominic Mysterio, Logan Paul, and who? Austin, Austin Theory. Theory. Yeah, I, I would put Montez Ford in that in that mix too. I think Montez yeah. Yeah, is yeah, going to yeah, be a sure. huge star for this company. Everything I hear about him, everybody, they're just waiting for them to pull that trigger on him and and put him into that top spot. A uh, lot of lot of fun stuff here. Bad Bunny was doing Spanish commentary, and he interfered in the ending. Mm-hmm. So you could, I, I think they're going to build to some sort of tag match in Puerto Rico for a WrestleMania backlash. So it'll probably sure. be, uh, you know, Bad Bunny and Ray, or you know, uh, the LWO will be involved, and it'll be against you know Dominic and and probably um, D- Damian Priest. So I thought this yeah. was fun. Bad Bunny interfered. He blocked. Uh, what did he have? Was it brass knucks? What was in there? Uh, oh, chain. It was a chain. Yeah, Damian Priest had a chain in his suit jacket, which he left in the ring. And that, listen, smooth interference by Bad Bunny. He didn't want to see his buddy get messed up. But that was fun, man. That was, they did a really good job with this match. Very emotional. I like the shots of, uh, you know, Ray's family and uh, Ray's daughter, Aaliyah, right? Aaliyah, she took, like, Dominic really splooshed her with that beer. Oh, my gosh. Threw it right in her face. He got slapped by his mom. Um. Well, give me, give me your bad buddy impersonation. Hey, hey, hey! That's hey, what he said. He just, <laughs> hey, do your taxes. <laughs> you know, if he if he turned around, okay, during that whole spot, if he turned around and he just looked at you, broke the fourth wall, looked you deadpan in the camera, and said, "Hey, do your taxes," I, I, that would have been it. That would have been. They would have. The whole thing would have ended there. Just goes black. Would That's you how you end the, the show. Off? I would have just shut the TV <laughs> off at that point. The dancing cereal and Bad Bunny telling me to do my taxes. That would have been it. That would have been the kiss of death for me. The next what match. What the ECW zombie showed up? You know what? You could have added that. It could have been sponsored by Sci-Fi. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I did tweet that, uh, you know, maybe they'll do a Lucky Charms sponsorship next time. You know, what is that going to look like? This was, oh, by man, the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to say Sorry. something a little controversial. This may have been yeah. my favorite match of the night over the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. Love this match. Great match. Yeah. I loved this match. Charlotte did a great job. Rhea was a million bucks. Mm-hmm. She's so good. Uh, this meant a lot more. This win for Rhea probably meant the, the most out of any of the other wins that she's had because she's had the title before. She's had big WrestleMania matches before. This was her big moment, yeah. you know, and this kind of ties into that whole Judgment Day storyline. And I think the race stuff has really helped her get confident in this role. 
Uh, her and Dominic are a great pairing. But, you know, what's interesting is that they separated her from the Dominic stuff, right? The, this, the Dominic and Ray stuff didn't really interfere with the Charlotte Flair match. It was totally right. separate. Yes, she's the heel, but everybody wanted to see Charlotte win this. Uh, Rhea win this, I should say. Um, just 23 minutes, man. But they they really put on a great match. Yeah, it was very enjoyable. Uh, I think they both left their hearts out on the mat. Um, it was a good match, too, you know? like, And just when you want to kind of like... I feel like a lot of people want to poo-poo on Charlotte Flair, but then you watch her and you're like, my God. As, as Triple H called her, a generational athlete. You know what? She is. She is. And a lot of people... It, it's interesting how she gets... There's a lot of negativity with her, but I, I, I don't see it. I think she's fantastic. Uh, you know, she's matured as far as a professional wrestler to, I mean, this is the best that she's looked in the ring. She looked great. Rhea is remarkable. I'm a big fan of hers. I thought this was the right move. Yeah. 23 minutes, 34 seconds. They went with this. So after this, you know, the crowd is pumped. Okay. Pumped. Yeah. And here comes the Miz and here comes Pat McAfee. <laughs> Uh -huh. wrestles the Miz in a three-minute match. I guess this was to bring you down a little bit. I don't think it was necessary to bring you down, but they did. Bathroom break. I guess it was a little bathroom break. Then you went into all these mm -hmm. video packages for like 45 minutes. Uh, it, it, I, it, at this point, I, was, I had had enough of the extras, and I wanted to see this match. Kevin yes. Owens, Sami Zayn, the Usos for the Undisputed Tag Team Championship, Went twenty four seventeen. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn won. What a huge reaction to that win! Give me a rundown of this match. You you just rewatched it right before we went on. Absolutely. Just to kind of bring you back into this. Give me your rundown of this match. Now I was I'm like you, very invested into this match. Very invested into the storyline, and. You know, you knew it was going to be something special when Sammy's music hit and that crowd went bonkers. Sammy gets in the ring with Kevin and the crowd starts doing the Olay chant, right? Jimmy Uso looked like he was about to cry. Yeah. Big moment for and everybody I there. I think everybody was like super emotional going. I was super emotional. I had like I was choking back like like wrestling tears watching it, you know? Great match, 25 minutes. They did everything that you wanted them to do, right? Millions not, of super not kicks. Not a missed motion. Millions of super kicks, stunners, power bombs, haluva kicks, blue thunder bombs, brain buster to the apron, tables. Um, if tonight, if last night was WrestleMania, I would have been happy. Great match. Uh, great main event. Love to see a tag match here. Uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn had the PWG logo on their trunks. And they yes. had Super Dragon's mask on the on the other side. Very cool mm -hmm. to see. They spoke about Reseda. They spoke about PWG in the presser afterwards. Uh, they, they essentially said that the Briscoes played an instrumental part in their careers. How, yeah, they broke out in Canada and Quebec, but... They made their name in Reseda in, in California. So uh, very, yeah. very cool stuff here. Uh, loved it. Great match. Uh, one of the best tag matches for WWE that I've seen. Great storytelling. So. Uh, and great to see all four of those guys in a main event picture like this. You also had some notes here. Vince McMahon was backstage. He was involved. He was wearing headsets. Mm -hmm. PW Insider first reported on Saturday night that Vince was backstage with his own office, which was said to be near Gorilla. He also had his headset on, giving feedback, asking questions. Dave Meltzer also confirmed the report, saying that he was not running the show, but he was very much involved, which I never thought that he wouldn't be involved for WrestleMania. I always had a feeling right. he would come back for WrestleMania. You don't want to go in there outside of everything. You would probably, I thought he would have, if he didn't come back, I, I thought he would have been like a consultant for this. Because you don't want to go in there blind yeah. for something like this. Uh, a couple things here. Let's go into night two, which is going to start here shortly. Here on Sunday. You have WrestleMania Showcase match. You got Liv Morgan and Ra uh, Raquel Rodriguez versus Natalia and Shotzi versus Ronda and Shayna versus Sonia and Chelsea Green. 
Brock Lesnar, Omos. You got Hell in a Cell with Edge and the Demon Finn Balor. Edge is going to do something cool here. Intercontinental Championship. Gunther defends against Drew McIntyre and Sheamus in a triple threat. You got the Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair defending against Asuka. And the undisputed WWE Championship. Roman Reigns defends against Cody Rhodes. Big main event feel. They really did a great job last night. And, and you know, night two should should be better. I don't know what else they could possibly do here. Other than, you know, do a hell of a main event. But do you, do you anticipate tonight to be better than last night? I think there's more marquee matches tonight and more curiosity. Like, I know you're not a fan of the match, but I really want to see what's going on with Brock Lesnar and Omos. Um, oh I think God. the Edge Finn Balor thing is going to be awesome. I think the Gunter match, it's like, it's, it, this is interesting because it's like a lot of big, a lot of, a lot of big, big stuff. Big, big. Right? a lot of big stuff. Big. Do you think they gave Vince his uh, mustache and extra headset backstage also? Yeah, yeah, he puts it right on. He takes the wig off, puts on the new wig, and then puts the mustache on. That's how he does. It. That's how he does it. Uh, they... uh, again, but the story is is Cody and Roman, right? Yeah, man, that's the big story. Uh, I, I'm I'm very curious how they do this. Very, very curious how they do this. Triple H and the Scrum claim that they broke SoFi attendance record, citing eighty thousand four hundred and ninety-seven. Uh, that was the number that was given out. Some other notes. Rhea said that this uh, said being the first Grand Slam champion is so satisfying. Rey Mysterio uh, riding to the ring with Snoop Dogg was legendary. Kevin Owens, uh, he gave Super Dragon and PWG credit for getting them into the position that they are. Also mentioned Jay and Mark Briscoe, like we said. Sammy compared the storyline to what the Sopranos did for television. And I think, you know what? It did a great job for professional wrestling as far as storytelling. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Hunter also praised Charlotte as a generational athlete. Doesn't recall seeing a match with her that didn't feel real. I thought this was great. I thought all this was great. It was a very fun show. Yeah. Uh, this is the biggest WrestleMania I've ever seen them do. And uh, well-deserved it. I'm curious to see what they do tonight. We're going to wrap it up here for this segment. We got to come back. We got a couple more minutes here. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition. WrestleMania edition. Rich, give me give me some yes. predictions for tonight. Ooh, I think the sleeper match is going to be Edge versus Finn Balor. Okay. I'm into that. We're going to see some nutty stuff. I want to see full-blown vampire Dracula Edge versus an insane-looking demon Finn Can you Balor. I want, I want Finn Balor to come Edge. down. Oh, Nosferatu Edge. Use use Aleister Black's old casket. And <laughs> yeah. I want to see... Um, you remember the when Undertaker disappeared and he had the bat wings? And yes. they, they had the pulley system? I want that with Finn Balor. Just okay, like I'm cool with that. Bat wings, uh, tendrils... Like make him like a Cthulhu type thing. Maybe I'm wishing for too much. I think uh, maybe a little bit. I think that's gonna be the sleeper. Um I think the main I wanna see that main event go forty five minutes. Just quote unquote, I wanna see a slobber knocker. Just yeah. like big main event punches, giant cartoon punches for forty five minutes. Yeah, it's gonna be big, man. It's gonna be a big show. I I'm looking forward to it. You know, this is this is the one and now you start over. Is, is Cody going to be the world champion and lead this company into whatever they're going into right now? Or do you continue with Roman and have him hit a thousand days? You know, this is uh, Monday yeah. is going to be a great story. They're going to have a great week. I think that the fallout from this is going to continue. It's not a one off. I don't think they're going right. to they're having WrestleMania. and They're like, OK, back to normal now. I think this is going to now mm -hmm. they, they, they've shown you what they can do. And, and I think it's a positive right. here. Listen, we have a lot to talk about next week when we come back. And everything else we're doing here. Rich, Matt Men Podcast, we're doing it this week, Saturday or Friday. We'll figure it out. We got we're live pal that I'm doing on Tuesday on Observer and a whole lot more. Dave and Brian are going to be back tonight with a rundown. And that's it for this week. See you next time.